Jim Acosta is CNN's chief White House correspondent, and you have likely seen him in the news these past two years as he takes every opportunity he gets to virtue signal. Let's to ask go. a question, sir. Go ahead. Sir, can Quiet. you state, can, Quiet. Mr. President-elect, go ahead. Can you state categorically, She's asking a question. Don't Mr. President-elect, can you give us a question? Don't be You're rude. You're attacking us. Can you give us a question? Don't be rude. Can you no, give I'm us a question? Give you a, I'm you, not going to give you a can question. You can you state categorically? You are fake news. Sir. Hey, is it Jim Acosta? Hi, how you doing? Yeah. Hey, nice to meet you. I'm a big nice fan. Sure. Thanks. CNN, right? Yeah. Uh, there was a small scuffle there. For what happened? Some seconds. people fighting? Not sure, yeah, I think so. Well, I, I just wanted you to know, I appreciate what you do. Oh, thanks. And your fake news. Okay, thanks. Uh, <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, right. Ah, well, there goes my smile. Mr. President, what about the DACA kids? Should they worry about what's going to happen to them, sir? The Democrats have really let them down. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I want them to come in from everywhere. Everywhere. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Sir, sir, answer me, sir. That's Jim Acosta for you. So before we proceed, here's a very short clip. This is Jim Acosta talking with the Secret Service because he forgot his press pass and he was trying to get in without it, thinking that his face would get him in. They did not recognize him, and if they recognized him, they didn't let him pass. His work for CNN is as you would expect. Personified Trump derangement syndrome, screaming hashtag resists slogans throughout press briefings and even during historical ceremonies that he felt the need to heckle during. This is really the state of some of these people. If Trump ever does anything, even if it's good, there must be something sinister about it. Acosta and his sycophants seem to perceive him as a selfless avatar of the free press, someone that acts for the sake of truth on behalf of the people. Clearly, only a narcissist thinks of himself in this way. Acosta has discovered a new low, a place that even some on the left have found distasteful. During the ceremony of President Trump meeting with Kim Jong-un, Acosta heckled them while they were signing documents asking about Otto Warmbier. Did you talk about Otto Warmbier, sir? This wasn't about defending Otto Warmbier or his family. This was about trying to get their goat. This was Jim Acosta heckling them, not asking professional journalistic questions. Although it is a fair question to ask, perhaps not during the signing ceremony. Jim and others have defended this unprofessional behavior, saying that he's protected by the First Amendment. Well, first of all, they're in Singapore, not in America. And second, I don't remember Acosta or his defenders defending Roseanne not too long ago when she said the things that she said. Criticism of somebody's actions is not a call to censor them. It would have at least been entertaining if Jim had yelled something like, Kim, you're dressed like a toddler, you're shorter in person than I thought possible, and your hair makes you look like you have an extra chromosome. A few hours after the summit, however, Jim Acosta, caught on a hot mic, says this is what they get. Hey, if they're not going to let me in the fucking meeting, that's what I'm trying Yeah, that's what I, that's what I'm shot to ask. All day long, man. There have been a surprising amount of people outraged over this meeting and also how excited people are that this meeting has occurred. Most people from what I have seen are happy to see the leaders meet as it foreshadows peace in the near future. This could be something that can benefit everyone, well mostly everyone, and it's better to have a crazy man at the table rather than running around outside acting crazy. It is important to have an amicable relationship with those you disagree with. Groups like the UN have lost touch with this. But this is Jim Acosta we're talking about here, a true personification of journalistic integrity. Surely he's not one of those hacks that have no true beliefs, just people they dislike that they construct their beliefs against. He is a CNN employee, and as they have told us time and time again, they are real news. They are unbiased news and they do not stage stories. They don't, say, act in a way that is intended just to get them more clicks. 
right? So, I have to stop you there. No one fakes stories at, he, at CNN. Uh, there were other people that were angry about this as well. Never Trumper Ben Shapiro was quick to showcase his own outrage that we would even talk to Kim Jong-un. Shapiro, like many of the establishment Republicans, just want war. I believe the correct term is chicken hawk. There are some people that do agree with him. His take is that because Kim Jong-un is terrible, we should not be talking to anyone, especially since he has millions of political prisoners. Funny, I remember FDR and Churchill talking to Stalin during World War II. Besides that, we've tried endless tensions that never go anywhere. It is indeed time to change our approach, and if things are as good as they appear to be, I think it could be a good thing for everybody and is worth a shot. What's that old saying? It's just crazy enough to work? Trump and his people even prepared a movie trailer that makes the event seem like a movie, like an action flick or a thriller, and it goes over the benefits of working with the West. Simple, yet effective, and I would imagine it speaks in a language that Kim Jong-un understands. Movies. Finally, I wanted to bring up a clip from last night on CNN featuring Chris Cuomo interviewing Dennis Rodman. Rodman, wearing shades, a MAGA hat, and a shirt advertising cryptocurrency, told the story of meeting Kim years ago and that Kim had asked Rodman to communicate to President Obama that he would be willing to negotiate peace talks. Rodman, in literal tears, either from joy or frustration from the past, said that Obama and the State Department had snubbed him when he reached out to them and that they never gave him the time of day, almost as if they had no interest. When I went back home, I got so many death threats. I got so many death threats when I was sitting there protecting everything. And I believed in North Korea. And when I went home, I couldn't even go home. I couldn't even go home. I had to hide out for 30 days. I couldn't even go home. But I kept my head up high, brother. I knew things were going to change. Peace talks are a good thing. By becoming more friendly with the guy, we are not condoning what he is doing, but rather putting ourselves in a position where we might actually be able to help, maybe even convince him to change his mind. We have tried butting heads for years, decades now, and I think it's worth to give it a shot to get along. I said it once, but I'll repeat myself. I would rather a crazy person be at the table during the talks than running outside being crazy, scaring people. If the peace talks continue, and we reach peace in Korea, this will be Trump's Berlin Wall, and he will likely win again in 2020. Even if they run Alec Baldwin against him. Democrats, please run Alec Baldwin against Donald Trump. <laughs>